Now, the federal government says it is embarking on a close investigation on the rating uh, index which Transparency International used to rate Nigerians in the last 10 years. And the Delta State Governor, Ifan Yokoa, says his government has written a protest letter to President Mohamed Buhari over the James Ibaru lead uh, loot rather recovered by Nigeria. Uh, this is Plus Politics, and I am Justin Akadonia. Welcome back. Now, the federal government says it is embarking on a close investigation of the rating index which Transparency International are used to rate Nigerians in the last 10 years. It said it has noted some gaps and discrepancies in the methodologies adopted by TI and therefore wondered why the ratings of Nigeria in some sectors have remained the same for some years now. Well, discussing with me is uh, Deputy Director Serap Kolawali Oluwadari and, of course, Debo Adeniro, Director, Center for Anti Corruption and Open Leadership, Kakor. We'll start with Debo Adeniro. Uh, many thanks for joining us uh, yet again on Plus uh, Politics. Let's look uh, at the issues uh, for discussion this morning. We'll start with that of uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, who said that uh, the federal government uh, is uh, actually not really being treated fair. He tried explaining how far we have come in terms of uh, what they have been doing and uh, that the TI uh, has a bit of some gaps in the rating when it comes to corruption in Nigeria. Do you really agree that, uh, uh, that the TI on its part, uh, according to the FG, lacks a clear view of the nation's uh, business environment? Well, thank you very much, uh, Justin. Uh, uh, it is not the CI that has not been uh, forthcoming with uh, new data. It is those that were a sample that uh, CI used to reach its conclusion in its uh, study of a perception of corruption uh, in Nigeria. Uh, the CI rely on what Nigeria. I mean, Nigerians say uh, about uh, their own perception of uh, the effort of government in the country and the pervasiveness of corruption in Nigeria. Um, but most of the time, perceptions do not correlate with the reality. Uh, what I see in the way the CIA did this work is that they are using the same uh, tools to carry out their research year in, year out. And uh, it, seems, it seems that it's the same set of people that are being um, interviewed or that are uh, uh, responding to their questionnaire year in, year out. And if they rely on the media, they are likely to keep on having the same report or uh, plummeting results from their study uh, because the present administration seems not to bother whether or not they have uh, public, I mean, good public perception or good press or not. And that is the reason why every issue of corruption is brought to the fore. And the perception of citizenry Will be, uh, will, will be enhanced by what comes out of the media and what uh, the general populace see. But one thing that is clear is that uh, Amnesty International might have not looked in the direction of um, the instrumentality of uh, corruption prevention, prevention of corruption that have been operationalized during the present uh, uh, administration. Uh, the administration has not been helping itself in the way it has carried out, I mean, carrying on with its public image. Uh, the media uh, unit of the administration, too, has not been giving enough information to Nigerians 
as to know what effort they are actually making in the area of controlling corruption. If they have been doing that, the perception could have been different. But then I need to mention it that if there is concealment in the way corruption issues are being handled, then Nigeria will not know the truth about it and the perception will be uh, lower. I mean, the perception of uh, 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 pervasiveness of corruption will be lower. People will think that corruption is not happening if the system, if the administration has decided to cover up. But All then right, I believe that we know so much about corruption that is going on in Nigeria and a number of uh, people interpret the situation the way that suits their own purpose, especially the politicians that are very vocal in the media and some media uh, organizations that believe that they do not have enough patronage from the uh, uh, administration or they do not have enough direct information okay, coming from the source. So, so they, will be, they will base their own uh, conclusion on maybe some assumption, I mean, assumption that is and not necessarily correct. Oh, I don't that it, is the, it is the administration that has to be blamed for the poor performance on the amnesty international. All right, Debo, would I talk more as per how the federal government has been trying or faring in its uh, anti-graft war. But let's just uh, take um, a listen and watch uh, what uh, played out yesterday uh, with the uh, Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed's address. I'm sure Nigerians need to be reminded exactly uh, what he said. We'll take that clip and we'll come back and talk some more. Uh, don't move a muscle. We, 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 we take this rating seriously. So we actually went and analyzed the ratings and we found that there's been some gaps, there's been some gaps, uh, uh, either there's no, we, have, we have not forwarded enough data or they have not, you know, analyzed such data. Because we found it strange that the country's rating in certain areas remained the same for a period of, you know, 10 years and we are, we, we are making you know, uh, we're, 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 we're taking remedial measures so that we can, they can, uh, they, they can get this data in respect of these, uh, uh, you know, sectors. Because we believe that it's, it's not possible for you not to improve, for you not to uh, uh, lose points. Uh, we believe that. Um, Overall, by the time we finish, by the time our, reform, our various reforms in the areas of, you know, uh, either the ease of doing business and other preventive measures, by the time they start taking effect, our rating in the next, uh, in the next year of TI would have substantially, you know, improved. All right, welcome back. You just watched uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed. They are talking about uh, the federal government, uh, you know, analysis on the TI's uh, index on corruption and other issues. Uh, let's just mention right now that we also have um, Kola Wale Olua, Dari, Deputy Director, uh, Social uh, Account, uh, economic and uh, research uh, Serap are joining us in this discussion right now. But uh, let me talk to uh, Debo yet again. Uh, the minister said that uh, the group's rating of Nigeria has not correctly reflected the government's uh, efforts to curb corruption in the country. W would you really say the federal government has shown enough uh, resolve uh, to tackling the issue of uh, graft in Nigeria? Let me tell you this. I am sympathetic with the administration of Muhammad Buhari to the extent that I know, not that I was told, that some efforts have been put in place to curb corruption in Nigeria. But then, if things have been destroyed for um, about 60 years, it will be difficult for somebody to write it within the space of eight years. There are some uh, instrumentality of Law that have been put in position that will make corruption crimes difficult to, I mean, to commit. One of it is the TSA. The TSA has been there. This administration operationalized, and that is a way.
to stop frivolous, I mean, opening of accounts on behalf of the federal government. The other one is BBN. It harmonizes how much individual or corporate organizations have in their bank accounts anywhere in the world. And that is a way to say that if you are keeping uh, process of corruption in many accounts, it will be known to the law of Nigeria. Then we have Act 2, or we have Skumon, you know, that is domiciled with the EFCC. Skumon is special uh, control units against money laundering. Making money laundering difficult for looters to do. We have Act 2, uh, uh, anti-corruption and transparency units that is domiciled with the ICPC. We have several instruments like that that makes corruption crimes. You see, prevention is better than cure. All of these instruments of the law are meant to make corruption crimes difficult to commit. And if it is difficult to commit, it means that people's uh, proclivity to committing corruption crimes will be reduced. Then mm -hmm. you are not going to see the result overnight because mm -hmm. Many of those who are implementing the law are already used to committing corruption crimes. They enjoy the process of corruption. Okay. They are benefiting from it. So if this is the case, then you cannot you can just imagine that the president will delegate you know authority of implementing all of these instruments of public corruption to certain people. These people, you can only see their faces, you can only see their past record, you can't see their inner, uh, inner mind. Okay? And some of them have made themselves merchandise. You know when the president knew the case, he called the judicial officers and appealed to them that they needed to assist him in you know, winning the, uh, uh, the war against corruption. But then that is not the case. He had to now come out with certain uh, uh, actions okay. that will show the judiciary that they too can be uh, uh, taken on frontally on the corruption crimes that they perpetrate or that they condone or they hate or abet. And that was what happened in the first term of office of this okay. uh, administration. Then when you look at what has been done so far, uh, corruption is no longer uh, corruption crimes is no longer committed with the uh, reckless abandon with which it used to be done. Those who want to commit corruption crime will look over their shoulder to see who is watching. Because when you look at uh, uh, these whistleblowers policies that the government has uh, uh, implemented for to, to, I mean, for some uh, to some extent. It now gives them that level of threat when they want to ask for gratification for okay. the job they ordinarily should do without asking for every, anything. So this is the way by which we should view, we should perceive the administration. All right, because we have been working with several administrations, several uh, governments, yeah, yeah, uh, we know that what the instrumentality of public. All right, Debo, a point uh, noted now, but let's uh, bring in Kola Wali Olua Dari. He is uh, the Deputy Director of um, Serap. Uh, uh, Kola Wali, let me just uh, take you back to what the Executive Director of Sislak, uh, Awal Sanjani, said. He said, although President Mohamed Buhari promised Nigerians to fight corruption, he has, however, not shown much commitment to deliver on uh, his uh, promises. Uh, then again, how would you rate the present government in terms of transparency in the anti-corruption crusade and management of recovered assets? Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm happy that you have mentioned transparency and accountability as just one of those key elements of measuring corruption, particularly as it relates to the administration of President Muhammad Buhari. And if you were to ask me uh, to break the I would score this administration very low because you cannot measure either corruption or whatever fight is perceived to be uh, to be undertaken against corruption without talking of transparency and accountability. 
And that is the, it speaks to not only the actions of government, but also the, the expenditure and uh, the allocation and expenditure aspect of governance as it were. And that's why I believe that even though we have a whole ministry dedicated to information, headed by the Minister of Information. So if we still have opacity in government affairs, particularly in expenditure, we still have a government that does not obey the rule of law by the various judgments. There have been obtained by the courts that is yet to be enforced. How can you uh, claim to have any sincerity in the fight against corruption? You've just mentioned the, the use of recovered um, assets. Sherap has sent um, several freedom of, info, of information requests to this administration asking specific information on how, uh, how much assets have been recovered, particularly uh, about your loot, and how those uh, funds have been spent since 1999, particularly those under this administration from 2015. We do not have project response from the government, even though we are waiting to the Attorney General of the Federation in its capacity as the Chief Law Officer to provide this information. The, the best we've had after we have filed the suit in court is the, the, the statements made uh, referencing that some of the funds, some, not even all, have been committed to the, the, the project the Lagos Bar Expressway, uh, the Second Niger Bridge, and the uh, Abuja Kano Expressway, which of course is not, uh, does not suffice because the details of what we're asking for is how much has been recovered, how have they been spent with specifics on the particular projects on which those funds have been committed and the, 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 the rate of work done uh, at, at the moment. So what we have is uh, government paying so much lip service to the fight against corruption, but as to whether there is transparency and accountability, uh, we, we, we do not see that. And that is why it's not surprising that the, the perception of Nigerians, Nigerians in this aspect uh, about the fight against corruption is still that nothing has been done in the fight against corruption, which is why Nigeria will continue to have a low rating on the transparency index uh, of the of, of anti-corruption index of Transparency International. The deficit, the trust deficit that has been there over the years needs to be closed. And that can only be done when people perceive and see. And it is the seeing the actions of government that will lead to that change in perception. That government is walking the talk by being transparent. We can, we can put it in proper context. Look at the budgetary process, for instance. How open is the budgetary process? particularly in its implementation. We've had the Auditor General's report, which has been rolling in year in, year out, detailing critical, uh, detailing um, various aspects of funds that cannot be accounted for, including by the National Assembly uh, in the 2015 report, the 2016 report, the 2017 and the 2018 report. And we've had government do nothing about this report. They know fully well that this report form part, a core part of the accountability cycle reports that are produced by the Auditor General of the Federation. Nothing has been done about them. All right, thank and you. these Hold are on. some of those various aspects that show that uh, uh, the government is not committed to being transparent and accountable in, in, in managing the public funds. All right, I'll throw the same question back to uh, Debo of um, Kakol. If I'm here, I'm set up some position concerning uh, this issue. I really want to hear from you as regards uh, your thoughts concerning uh, how these uh, recovered looted funds uh, uh, are being handled. How would you score uh, the present administration uh, vis-a-vis uh, renewed calls by Nigerians uh, for uh, the transparent, uh, transparent uh, you know, review and um, accountability when it comes to these uh, proceeds from former President Olushago of Basinjo's administration to date. How would you say this present administration has fared in terms of uh, telling Nigerians and being open to Nigerians as per how these funds are, are being used or are going to be used? Thank you very much, Justin. Uh, first and foremost, you should know that, of course, I said it the other time that the president or the executive, as, a, as an arm of government, will have to delegate some of these uh, functions to certain people in government, you know, ministers, agencies, and the rest of them. So those are, so these powers are delegated. Those are these assignments are delegated. May be uh, falling short of the expectations of Nigerians. I agree with Paula Wale that that is the reason why. Uh, the perception of uh, corruption in Nigeria will continue to be very, very low. Uh, the Minister of um, Justice, who is a, also a politician, 
seem to be trying to protect his uh, uh, colleagues, you know, in the party, in the ruling party, and will not want their uh, properties that are confiscated to be disposed of properly. Most of the time, I believe that uh, there are uh, uh, several underhand dealings in the disposal of uh, proceeds of corruption that have been confiscated by several agents, and that will not encourage the agencies to do their work optimally, since they know that it will be sabotaged. And you remember that the Attorney General has uh, entered knowledge protection in some of the corruption cases that are supposed to be in court. That means that those cases that have been investigated, diligently investigated, risking their life and the rest of them, the prosecutors will not be happy about it. Then coming to disclosure, uh, the Ministry of Information, the assistants have not been working uh, in the way that is expected by the energy of Nigerian people. And even to you people in the media, many occasions you people will complain that you don't have the, 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 the information that they require from the, uh, from the Ministry of Information or from the uh, presidency that where the, uh, where the, the information should ooze out. And if you don't have information, you will have to bank on uh, uh, what you get, snippets that you get from a, a third party. And that is not good. So what we have discovered is that to those who all of these uh, uh, assignments have been delegated, they have not been performing it optimally. And that is why we suspect that there could have been sabotage in certain quarters. It doesn't matter whether the, the saboteurs are in the executive, whether they are in the legislature, whether they are in the judiciary. You can see what happened to Oyuz Okalu. Oyuz Okalu was not cleared of the allegations leveled against him, but he was released all the same, and the judiciary and the legislature did this back and actually before they reabsorbed him into the national uh, assembly. What kind of law will such a person make to give adequate punishment to those to those who have committed such corruption acts? Let me butt in if here. Let me butt in Debo. We encourage other people. Let me butt in Debo. Let me butt in Debo. We know. The Minister of Information, they, uh, I said Debo, Lai Mohammed, had said that um, the federal government is using, let me just quote him, uh, preventive mechanism rather than prosecution in the fight against uh, graft. And they said that's why they have uh, this uh, program launched by the ICPC, the National Ethics uh, Policy. How do you weigh that particular statement? And do you really think that these measures, you know, as uh, said by the federal government, are actually working? Of course, we were elected when we have the personality of uh, Professor Bolaji Owatanoe as the chairman of SCPC. We knew what he did when he was in Pakistan. We knew what he did when he was, he was the executive director of uh, a civil society organization. And when he brought out all of these uh, policies and uh, maybe advisory you know, programs, we knew that it was meant to uh, prevent corruption. And like I said the other time, prevention is usually better and cheaper than cure. Prevention is the reason why all of the uh, legal instruments, like BVN, like CSA, like SCOMO, like AFTU, have been, have been operationalized. There are several others. All right. Now, we... Uh, the administration will need some time. Okay, the administration would need some time. To, uh, carry out the Let's conclude right now with uh, the fight against corruption in Nigeria. I just want to get your last words uh, concerning the institutions, the ICPC, the EFCC. Uh, there have been several talks as per uh, how they have been framed. But right now we have a, a new Hemsman in charge of the EFCC, Bawa. If you were to advise, uh, what should we be focusing on right now very quickly in the fight against corruption? Well, I, I believe that uh, Bauer has a lot of uh, jobs to do. Uh, 
first and foremost, he needs to clear the organs favor so that he may on the ground. And that is by ensuring that the men, especially the uh, investigators, are diligent in the execution of their assignments. Prosecutors are also diligent in uh, uh, putting together their charges so that the criminals will not be able to escape you know, uh, some of the heinous crimes they have committed against the people. You need to harmonize the dichotomy between those who have police uh, background and those who don't, uh, so that at the end of the day, they will not see certain people, certain uh, prosecutors or investigators or uh, other offices as being power boys. So he needs to do that. When he does that, then he needs to prosecute all the cases without fear or favor and ensuring that he needs to ensure that there is no uh, sacred power in the way the cases are treated. When he does that, he's going to succeed. Okay. The other side of it is that government needs to provide every instrument, every tool that the EFCC and other anti-corruption agencies require to execute their assignment. One of these is the protection for the operators on the field, especially, because they expose themselves to danger. And if they are not protected, they will not want to do the job optimally. And if they don't, there will be some gaps All right. through which the criminals will escape justice. Thank and you so that much, Debo. will not be good for us. The judiciary and the legislator also have to help the matter so that once there is synergy, then there will be uh, a, a, a one way forward where Indeed. every Nigeria will, be benefit, will, will benefit from it. Indeed, thank you so much. It, uh, it is actually a collective fight uh, for everyone, the legislature, the judiciary, and of course the executive to stem this issue of corruption you know, in the board. And we were joined by right. Debo Adeniro, uh, executive director of CACOL, and of course uh, deputy director of uh, SERA. We'll take yet another break, and when we return, the Ibori loot is still in the news as the Delta State government protests uh, the recovered loot in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>